throughout the ages, philosophers, theolog theologians, artists, writers, they have devoted their entire lives trying to understand the mysteries of the soul. What is the soul? What is it anyway? Do we actually remember where we came from? Do we actually remember any past lives? And other questions such as what is the difference between a human being and a soul being? And I think the most the most important question that we end up asking ourselves is who am I? Who am I? What am I doing in here? Why, why, why did I, I was born? What was the purpose of me being here in this world, in this lifetime, in this moment in time? And I think this question is the question that those that started to awaken for the, the spirituality, those that start to awaken on a soul level, start by questioning themselves. This is like the question that as soon as you start question, you know, asking, who am I? you know that you are about to embark on a journey that is so much deeper than anything else that you are ready to remember to remember who you are on a soul level and um you know this understanding of the nature of the soul, I think, is the most essential task for anyone that is embarking on a spiritual path. Because without this knowing of the nature of the soul, we easily get lost, we easily get stuck, confused, unfulfilled frustrated so what is the soul the soul is the part of us that is inextinguishable it doesn't get extinct it's eternal it is who we are at a core core level our true nature our true essence. The soul exists beyond this life, beyond our physical bodies. This is just a shell for our soul. This is not who we are. This is not who we are. This is just a shell for our human experience. The soul transcends much more than our physical bodies and what is beyond this lifetime that we are living now. Because the soul is what we carry from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. You know, on a spiritual path, we have to be open to the understanding that this is not the first time that we are here. Reincarnation is a thing. It exists. That's why we remember things even on an unconscious level that gets activated and we don't understand why we have certain phobias in this lifetime, why we have certain fears certain reactions because they've been carried from past lives where 
certain beliefs, certain traumas were imprinted in our soul DNA. And because the soul passes through lifetime to lifetime, those imprints come with us. And that's why sometimes we don't make sense about these things. Sometimes we might get deja vus and we don't understand why we get those deja vus. We think, I've, I've gone through this before or I, that person, you know, I know that person from somewhere, but I can't pinpoint from where. It's impossible to have met that person. But somehow you know you know that person, that you've seen that person before. Or place. It's the same thing because we've travelled, our soul travelled from lifetime to lifetime. The soul is the part of us that is connected to the entire universe. And if you think that a soul is who we are at the core level and you understand that at the core level we are energy, that's what we are, we are energy, we are part of this immense universe which is energy, which vibrates in, in different uh, levels. That's why we connect with some people and not the other, because it depends on the vibration the, uh, that we are when we meet. And if you, if you think about that, if we are energy at a core level and energy doesn't die, energy doesn't get extinguished, it doesn't vanish. Energy simply changes form. It changes shape. It transmutes. So if our core, which is our soul, is energy and energy never dies or disappears, our soul never dies. Our soul doesn't disappear. It only transmutes, it only changes shape from one body to another body or from one body to spirit, which is our, it, which is the super consciousness, which is like the upper world, is where we go when we die. It's believed that when we die, our soul elevates and go as spirit and uh, transmutes into spirit, which is the upper world, until our soul is ready to descend and come back in another body so we can go through another lifetime. So energy is everywhere. Energy is all around us. Every living thing on the planet Earth and in the cosmos is energy. And so is alive. Plants, uh, animals, they all have souls. They are all unique. They are all unique. No plant is the same. No animal is the same. They are all part of this immense universe. So they are all energy. We are all one. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So soul is the source of our intuition of our higher knowing and the higher knowing is what comes from spirit you know the upper world the higher consciousness the source is what connects us to that higher higher source of knowing 
of being. It's like it's there in the middle and is the source that connects us through that, through that inner voice that guides us, that calls us every minute of every day. It calls us to go to our path, the path that we chose before coming to this shell and to this lifetime. But, you know, there is this, I wouldn't say myth, but there is this thinking that some people um, are born without souls or that you might lose your soul throughout your lifetime. And let me explain. You know, you have the example of pedophiles, rapists, abusers, murderers. If you think about this kind of people that are capable of committing such atrocities, how on earth can they have a soul? It's impossible to have a soul. They don't have feelings. They don't have hearts, right? So there is this belief they either they were born without a soul or somehow they lost it. That's why they they are capable of doing these things. But the truth is, and it's completely valid, don't get me wrong, it's completely valid to think about this because we are humans. Uh, we are souls having a human experience. And part of our human experience is to have an ego and our ego it's fooled by fear obviously we are super scared of coming across these people that you know are capable of doing these kind of things murders rapists we we are we are afraid of them you know and so it's natural for us to try to understand and it's natural for us to judge their actions and so believing that these people sold their, uh, sold their soul to the devil or were born without one it's completely valid in terms of the fear that we feel that you know these people are dangerous but the truth is, we are all born with a soul. We all have a soul. We all are born with one. And the soul doesn't run away. The soul doesn't get lost throughout our lifetime. However, some people, like people like rapists and abusers and pedophiles and etc what they lose is not their soul what they lose is the connection to their soul through trauma inner wounds ancestral societal familial childhood trauma all of these traumas that I said before that are imprinted in our DNA, you know, even if it's ancestral for past lives or, you know, previous generations, we carry seven generations of trauma within our DNA. And this is proven scientifically. This is not made up. And then you have your soul imprints from previous lives. And then you have this lifetime trauma, like most of the trauma starts in childhood, but not exclusively. But some of these traumas can become so, so intense or can be so, so intense that the person 
ends up losing connection with their inner being, with their true essence, with their soul. And because they lose con uh, connection with it, they put, the, they barricade, they barricade this, you know, this connection. Look, like the soul, the soul is is in our hearts, right? That's where the soul is. Is in our heart chakra. Some people put walls up due to these traumas that are so intense. Put these all walls up with rage, with anger, with hatred, with pain, with grief, with core wounds, with defense mechanisms. The walls are so up, it becomes really dark. There is no light shedding because the they are barricaded. The heart is surrounded by these walls of toxicity and they lose connection with their soul. There is there a separation. That's when the separation from the human being with the soul being happens. They didn't, they didn't lose their souls. They lost the connection with their souls due to these walls that they put up that came from intense traumas, being ancestral, childhood, familial, society, societal, religious, cultural, all of that. And then what they end up doing is without accessing the soul, which is the source of love of acceptance of kindness of empathy of all energy without access access to that they feel their separation from their inner being their true essence and they become what we call dead inside or soulness and that's why we kind of believe that these people sold, sold their souls to the devil or lost it somehow. Yes, they lost the connection with it. They become numb. They become dead inside. And because they are numb, because they feel numb, they go to extremes to feel something. They crave to feel something and the way to do that is to commit these cruel acts of murdering of abusing of raping of you know killing to feel something to feel that adrenaline burst that will vanish and that's why they have to keep doing it they keep doing it because it vanishes because they are seeking energy or they are seeking, yeah, the source of energy outside of themselves through these extreme acts rather than inside of themselves at a soul level, which has all the energy. Because when we light, let the light from our soul, our inner being shine, we can see things clearly and we are not moved by a state of fear or a state of control. We don't need that. We don't need to get the adrenaline from outside of ourselves. We have everything we need inside. And that's why I keep banging on the same thing. It's so, so, so important to be willing to see our darkness to understand what core wounds are we carrying with us, to understand why, why we get triggered, why we get activated by certain things, to understand these things, our, 
our behaviors, our thoughts without judgment, with compassion, and then accept them. Because when we are able to accept these shadows, because, you know, healing only happens when we are able to accept and love ourselves for who we truly are, shadows and all. That's how healing happens. It's not by ignoring, dismissing, rejecting. Because when you do all of that, you reject yourself, you put your walls up, and those walls are fooled with, imagine walls, those bricks of those walls are, are all toxic things, toxic beliefs, toxic uh, defense mechanisms, toxic feelings. That's why you can't love, we can't reach the heart, we have to go there. Accept, accept you give, and give love in order to heal. And when we are willing to do that, when we are willing to look at ourselves with compassion, without judgment, when we are willing to love ourselves, we are able then not only to heal, but to tap into our soul. And the more we tap to our true essence on a soul level, the more we can remember who we are. The more we can express our true essence, the more connected we are with the universe we then just become we remember where we came from we remember who we are at a soul level we remember why we are here and we become that person that we were meant to be all along we become our soul, who we truly are on, a, on our essence. 